All right, so we're on to the question of the week. Huh. And I've been, this has been going on on TikTok for a minute now. People have been putting out podcasts and TikToks and all kinds of things. And the question is, is the influencer dead? Yes or no? What does that even mean? Okay. So let's break it down a little bit. Traditionally, what we know as an influencer, and we talk about it on here a lot, the pretty pictures, the stage matcha in your Starbucks, the Revolve festivals, the highly white okay. Okay, 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 white influencers. When you traditionally think about that influencer, is that influencer dead? Is what they're referencing. I think it's dying. Okay. I don't think it's. I don't think she's gone yet. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think she's dead. I think this is like the bitch is dead. <laughs> she is like. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel is done, it's chopped, is we're on to the next. And I think it's an interesting time. If you are a POC creator, now is your time to shine. Because yes, the pretty pictures from the tradi- the white influencers, you know, the get ready with me's from their perspective, I feel like that's dead. Like we've seen it. You know, I we wanna see how the other creators, how the black creators, black and brown creators, how you're creating, what your day in the life is like, what your get ready with me, what your perspective is. I feel like that's how we are in just media and entertainment in general. We're seeing a lot more content from people of color. Like look at Abbott Elementary. Like it yeah. it has um, knocked out Modern Family as the number one show on ABC. Yeah. And that speaks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No and fact. so I feel like this is our time, black creators. Yeah. Like, do your get ready with me. Do your day in your lives, your vlogs, all that kind of stuff. You think? I don't think so. I don't I don't care what color you are. I still don't want to see you cleaning your house. <laughs> I'm tired of it. <laughs> I think tired it's been that, over that's, done. I, I think, think that that's dead. Like... After we saw Jackie Aina clean her house like five or six times and then the rest of y'all started doing it, it was like, how many people, how many beautiful black women do I need to see clean their house? Okay, but that, but what I'm trying to say in general, like the traditional white creators, the cookie cutter creators, okay. the everything's perfect yeah. creators, that's dead. The more yeah. real content. And so when I say black creators POC secret I feel like we have a totally different perspective Agreed. like you're gonna see Jackie taking out her braids you're gonna see yeah. like you're gonna see those real and raw moments that's what I'm speaking but on. not all of us are like that I know a lot of black creators that are just a melanated version of those white creators yeah well they're dead too oh, okay well <laughs> okay. I, I don't want to say they're dead I don't want to say they're dead because this is what I'm seeing happening. Okay. I'm seeing I've been on campaigns where like everybody is a person of color Okay. Like you never saw that. Yeah. It was one, maybe two. Yeah. yeah. I also last summer, um, I was in Soho at this magazine stand and like out of the hundred and fifty magazines, I wanna say like forty of the covers were black women. And again, unheard of. Maybe one cover would be of us, but like multiple, all of them, nah. Yeah, brands are getting hip. They understand like they need the cool. They need the authentic and we're going to bring it. Not saying everybody's going to do that, but yeah. they want to reach a totally different audience, you know, and that white cookie cutter aesthetic is just not reaching the audience that they need or like it's over, it's oversaturated. Yeah. And so people were bringing up a great point about like if everybody's a celebrity, then who's a celebrity? If everybody's an influencer, then who is actually having influence? And I was reading this article about... um. I think it was either Revolve Fest or Coachella. Um, brands aren't even inviting Instagram influencers. They're inviting the TikTok influencers. Yep. And when people aren't flocking to the Instagram influencers anymore, they're flocking to the the, the TikTokers. Yep. You know, I think the the person, I, the article I'm referencing, it was either Revolve Fest or Coachella, something like that. But influencers from Instagram and TikTok were both invited and they saw the difference between how fans were flocking to each other. They was like, Instagram, who are you? They, they didn't know who they were. Yeah. And the TikTokers, everybody is loving the TikTokers. So that just speaks a lot to like how the platforms are changing. Shifting. Like that, that high, that, you know, high hierarchy it used to be Instagram. Now it's yep. TikTok. Yep. And I went to Alicia Keys. Um, she has soul keys. Yes. Uh, Alicia shout Keys. Out, shout out to Soul, soul Care. Keys. Love it. Yes, love it. Babe. Love it. So she had an event a couple of weeks ago and I went and I just saw a whole bunch of TikTokers. Like I didn't I saw like OG 
influencers um, that I've been following for years and people that you see po- pre pandemic. Yeah. And but then I'm seeing a whole new class of creators and they're all TikTok famous. Yep. And so if you haven't done so already, like get that TikTok popping. I yep. don't know what else to say, but TikTok is the future. Yeah. And I think we speak from a place of privilege. Yeah. We don't got to hop on every trend. We don't no. have to be on social media every day. Nope. So we don't know what it's like to just start today. But all we can do is just keep like harboring in on that be authentic be yourself yeah. kind of thing but i still think i disagree i still think that i don't think the influencer is dead even on tiktok because you i just think said she's dead she she's dead dying well then you said she dead she's dying black girl. i want her to be dead <laughs> but she's not because so for me and you she's dead but when i look at the comments because it's something that i struggle with often i'm like i put a lot of time and effort and energy and authenticity into my content. Like what you see really are my emotions. And to see someone that I'm proud of, like, yo, I'm proud of whoever you are, especially black woman blowing up on TikTok in two months. When for me, all I see you doing is putting on makeup and then smiling and then that's it. And there's not much effort that goes into that. But that still is getting more likes and views and comments than content that I would gravitate to, like cinematic content. It still gets the likes and the views. But if someone who creates cinematic content is sitting in a room with someone who creates makeup content on TikTok, I think that the influencer versus the content creator is going to get the fans running to them, take my picture with me. So I don't think it's dead yet. Because I think that people are sheep and they just kind of flock to that, if that makes sense. The era that we're in right now is like filled with so many micro trends. Yeah. You know, we were ta- we we speak about on this episode about you being that girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's very trendy, but you know, that's who you are. And yeah. so you see these now on TikTok, it's it's the coastal grandma as far as fashion. Oh yeah, no, I actually saw the coastal grandma. The co- I'm like, yo, I wear things like this though. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm not thinking coastal grandma, yeah. but like that's the fashion. Like everything is so micro trend now. Yeah. Um, from the cleaning content, from yeah. the it girl aesthetic, from the night. Now it's a night look. Oh, I actually like the night look. Yeah. So, I'm not so gonna like lie. everything is just like I don't know. Like trends used to have a lot more longevity. Yeah, and that's the thing. They don't. Yeah. But, and what I've been seeing is that because they don't. It's easy for people to hop on a trend. It's easy for people to blow up from it. I'm very interested to see. The thing about the influencer is that she had a long ass run. Yeah. She's had a 15 year plus run. So I'm very interested to see who from TikTok will evolve and have longevity Mm -hmm. in this industry. Mm -hmm. If the thing that's making you famous and making you money is very quick and very easy because we see it in music all the time. One hit wonders. Oh, you're here for two years, three years, four years, but not everybody has a long career like Nas or Jay-Z or Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And then that's where creator burnout happens, like chasing these trends. Yeah. And so what does that look like long term? Because TikTok is still yeah. fairly new. new. And a lot of the people are Gen Z and whatever is underneath Gen Z. Alpha? Gen Alpha. And so that's all they know is TikTok and no, that yeah. fast content. Yep. Even shifting my mindset and the way I create to do like the fast content. It's it's a mind fuck. No, it is. My manager the other day was like, yo, you're so focused on you want to create these long form, beautiful videos for YouTube. But why? Yeah. You just need to do that for TikTok. Yeah. And so that's where I'm at right now. It's just like I have a complete I have, wouldn't say I completely abandoned my YouTube, but I, I don't know when the last time I uploaded a YouTube video when I yeah. can go on TikTok and make a little 15 second video and it can be just as impactful. Yeah. And reach more people yeah, and reach more people. And it's just like, once again, going back to your why. Yeah. You know, yep having a bigger, greater story to tell, having something to say, I think that's the future of being an influencer. I agree. Um, Speaking of TikTok and being famous, I started watching Hype House. Ooh. And it's like my guilty pleasure now because I don't really like reality TV. And I hated this. Jason put it on and I was like, this shit is (laughs) awful. What is this? Who are these white kids? But now it's so interesting because... It's seeing kids have a dream and actually 
chase it and accomplish it in a very real and a very cool way. And like much like we listen to adults our age say, oh, you know, I was working at the grocery store and I did all this and I made it. I mean, they're much younger. They're 17 and 18. But some of them are like, oh, you know, I was working at McDonald's before this. I wasn't doing anything in Nebraska. And then my life just changed around. I was able to buy a house for my parents and do all these things. I think it's really cool. Uh, but again, some of them dropped out of high school and moved to L.A. just to be TikTokers. What are you going to do if this doesn't last? Like, what, what's next? If you guys aren't don't know, Hype House oh, yeah. or Creator Houses became a thing. Was it before the pandemic or during the pandemic? I think kind of before, but definitely yeah, during, during the, the pandemic because you couldn't go nowhere. Mm-hmm. So a bunch of pretty much a bunch of creators live in this house. The house is funded by brand deals. And you just sit and you're in this house and you just create all day. They have a bunch in L.A. You form like like these little crews. Little clicks. Yeah. Little clicks. And what's very familiar or interesting about these houses, they don't be having no black people. That's when I was watching Hype House. I was like, yo, this is boring. I was like, ain't no drama. I was like, ain't no. There was a one biracial kid. Yep. He brought the flavor. Yeah. Loved him. But it was just like, we want more of that. Like, that's entertaining. Yeah. So I would love to see a Hype House, but like the black version Agreed. of that. There was a docu-series or a documentary that highlighted this Hype house S type of house yep. in Atlanta. I forgot the name. It was like The Power of Influence or something like that. It was just a CNN special, I believe. But that was really interesting because you see like the flip side of it and how black creators struggle with getting these brand deals, like where you can have the millions of millions of views and followers, but brands are still skeptical. This was last year, I believe. Okay. Hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping now that they, they've been able to gain um, more traction and notoriety and get more brand deals. But it just speaks to how, you know, these houses and Instagram, they're all just a microcosm of the issues that we already have in the world and they're kind of like highlighted on these platforms but yeah i would love to see a black version of it agreed a thousand percent all black everything yes (laughs) i'm rooting for everybody black so something else that i read um for released this article called or the premise of it is is the girl boss dead and It kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. You love uh, Sophia Amorosa. I am a girl boss, okay? (laughs) So I had to read it. Clicked it with a quickness. And it came on a very serendipitous day. I'll talk about that afterwards. But basically, the article was like, listen, the girl boss was during the rise of Instagram. You know, she's a millennial. She entered the workforce right as uh, the recession started. Um, So she's all about her money. She's all about empowering other women, starting businesses, being independent. And the bitch got burnt out is basically what the article said. And now it's all about being a big sister. And there's all of these women on TikTok in their mid 30s, early 30s that are essentially giving love advice, career advice to Gen Z women and girls. Um, And the article is asking, is this work oriented career oriented tunnel vision woman is that trend dying out and are we now prioritizing love and relationships and soft living versus making money and my thing is like we why can't, can't we do both guys. how the fuck you gonna live soft and you ain't got no money <laughs> like, i don't understand go fund me duh <laughs> i don't understand <laughs> who is funding this soft life yo your followers facts I, like it's 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 nothing to ask for money these days like people have no shame no you're right I mean I get it I feel like you know there should be some give and take like having a patreon and but there I think there's some tact to it involved as well like I don't know I don't know the proper way to ask people for money <laughs> I don't either yeah <laughs> but I think it's cool when people just donate yeah that's Maybe, dope. are y'all listening yeah <laughs> Because, look, we are self-funded here at Content Queens, okay? okay? But no, it raises a really interesting point for me about what our different generations prioritize. Um, And I think for us, okay, we prioritized work and getting ahead and making money so that we could live these cool lives. And for them, because of TikTok... And because of the pandemic. Because of the pandemic, rest is important and it feels and seems like making money can come very easily with very minimal work. Yeah, like Kim K said, y'all don't want to work. And so this is this is evident <laughs> that y'all don't want to work. You know, it's crazy because millennials, we're looking at our parents' generation and 
we saw them work at a job for 30 years. They're about to get to this age when they're retiring or they're already there. And we didn't want that for ourselves. And then paired with the recession, it yeah. was just like, you going to sink or swim. You going to hustle or die yeah. kind of thing. So we, it wasn't like we had a choice. Yeah. I speak about this all the time. When I graduated from college, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was just law. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah. what am I do with my life? Like, it just felt so. And I graduated in 09, so it just felt, yeah, I'm giving my age. Well, we, <laughs> we give our age all the time anyway. Um, and it was just like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, and then I was, I wanted a career in fashion and I could not find a job in fashion. So I just created my own job. Yep. And that's where we're at today. Yeah. And so this is not. I don't like these articles that jab at millennials or the girl boss culture like because there are reasons yeah. to why we are here. We didn't wake up one day and say, yo, we hustling. And I'm I'm not, I'm, we're just going to hustle more. We're going to yeah. hustle with more intention, hustle with purpose, like our last episode, yeah. last season's episode. Um, but that that hustle, that spirit, that that's how I got this far. I'm not exactly. a, abandoning that to live a soft life. Like I can do both. Yeah, exactly. Because and we of do my both. Hustle, yeah, because of my hustle, we're allowed to do do that now. Yep. So, yeah, you don't skip ske steps, please. Like, enjoy the process. Respect the process. Understand, like, brick by brick is how you get there. Yep. Don't know shortcuts. Yep. At least something solid. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Here are watches anywhere and everywhere you get your podcast. But hold up. Sit back down. We're not done with you. Hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss a minute or even a second of what we have in store for you. For now, this is Content Queens. Where content is queen.